Cleveland Film Talk takes you behind the camera lens and introduces filmmakers from the 37th Cleveland International Film Festival. Today at Cleveland Film Talk, we have two filmmakers who've created fictional narrative films. However, they both have a very personal touch to the storytelling. Justine Maul, your film Youth has a very strong autobiographical element to it. Can you talk about how you discovered the story and really chose to make a feature film out of um, your experience? Um, well, this happened, this is, uh, the, the, the film is about um, a very traumatic event of my, my 20s, uh, my early, my, actually my 20th year. Um, I, was, uh, I was working really hard at school and, and um, starting to have sort of confidence in myself and all that and, and, and uh, um, all of a sudden my, my father uh, got sick and, and uh, this, this sort of degenerative disease which um, he died of uh, several months later. Uh, so it was very sudden, very brutal. Uh, and I, I really didn't know how to, to deal with it at all. And at the same time, I was, I was still dealing with um, this very difficult school I was in and I was falling in love and I'd fallen in love with this with this boy who was very complicated and all that um, and so it's about sort of juggling with all of that it's 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 a movie about that um, and um, I, I I didn't want to be a, a filmmaker uh, at all actually um, even though I think it was in the back of my mind um, until my my uh, early 30s I wanted to be a philosophy teacher um, so I was studying for that and then there's this very difficult exam to become a philosophy teacher mm -hmm. in, in public school and in, in, in schools in France. Uh, and I took it, I took it, and after a while I was like, okay, forget this. Um, I'm going to be a, a, a filmmaker. It sort of came onto me uh, like something that's been kind of repressed for a long time, I think. <laughs> Auto-repressed, uh, not, not by anyone else. Uh, and, um, and so I, 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 I did several documentaries. Um, I thought I would be more on the documentary, uh, be more my, my interest, because I'm extremely interested um, in, uh, in sort of people and their faces and they're just sort of, uh, yeah, I don't know, I have this sort of curiosity for the human, uh, human face. Um, so I, I did a documentary in, in Shanghai, one in New Orleans. Um, and then I, I, uh, I did these, these two shorts, which I didn't think I could write myself. I really, I couldn't imagine writing a fiction or anything. Um, so my, my, uh, my husband at the time uh, wrote the two, uh, the, these two fictions. Um, uh, and, um, and then we separated, so I didn't have a writer anymore. Um, and I, I really didn't know what else, and I wanted to do a feature film, because I, right. I, I found that short was very, um, short films, uh, they, didn't, they didn't go to very many festivals. I thought it was so much work and, and for so much investment for not much mm -hmm. return mm -hmm. result. So I, I thought I was, I was ready, even though I wasn't ready from a technical point of view, but I was ready for, for, to do a long film. Um, so you began to script this story. Yeah. So it was some time after then that, that it so happened So this was 15 years, years later. Yeah. Oh, okay. 15, 15, yeah, 15 years, years later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you uh, began scripting it, um, was this kind of just, um, this story was speaking to you as a, as a narrative as opposed to, or as a fictional film as opposed to a documentary narrative? No, actually, I, I, want, I, I never, at, at the beginning, I never imagined writing a Autobi uh, mm -hmm. autobiography with that. I, I really wanted to, 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 it to be very freely inspired from facts, and so it was very fictish, fictitious, or I don't know. Um, but the more I tried to write, the more kind of arbitrary it seemed, was like going in one direction and another, and why not go in another? And, and so in the end, I, I, I went to see a, a, a scriptwriter, and she said, well, you know, 
it seems like the only way for you to do this is to write it, it as, as it was. Yeah. yeah. And you know, uh, uh, adapting things. Uh, it, it took place. A lot of it took place in Los Angeles, and it's, uh, we couldn't shoot in Los Angeles, so we we shot in in the south of France. Uh, things like that, and the the characters aren't always right. Exactly. In the film, you actually incorporate um, your father's work. Um, and, and so in this process that we're talking about mm. of bringing something from your own life, you even went, after scripting it, you even went a step further and brought even his own work into your work. Can you talk well, about making that choice? Um, in, in your film? Well, for me, it's not a step further because it, it, I was talking about really how it happened as, as closely as possible. So, um, and I felt that was very important to my, right. to my project. And so the fact of including uh, this scene in which the main character, the 20 year old, is watching a film of her father's and crying uh, didn't, yeah, didn't mm -hmm. seem. Uh, was it, how was your selection process? Uh, your father, Louis Mal, has um, a quite an, uh, an illustrious, extensive career. How did you select which element or which of his? Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, start with the idea, oh, I'm mm -hmm. going to take something of his work. It, it seemed right. obvious to, to, for me to take this, uh, I, I wanted to include this specific scene from his documentary on, on India called Phantom India. It's a nine hour documentary. And there's this one scene in which he, there's a beautiful voiceover with his voice, and, mm -hmm. and I've always loved his voice because he's he's much younger than when I know when I knew him, mm -hmm. um, and it's a beautiful text. He he right. he wrote it, and uh, it's always made me cry. So I thought, you know, I'd, I'd include a scene in which she cries watching this right. this thing. Now, as you were on set directing, um, did you how did you strike that balance between now needing to really bring in you know having a director's mind and scope? and yet that the story is very personal. Um, it, uh, it was very much in the background that the story was personal. We shot in my father's house. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted the actor, the main actor, to wear his clothes, but he was like, <laughs> he drew the line there. <laughs> and just sleep in his bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, so it, I mean, the whole thing was very present, but certainly, really, really in, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the background. The, 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 it was like a commando, this movie. Right. We did it with no money, people right. weren't paid, you know, very, very, uh, had very low salary. Yes. And it was like, are we going to be, I was pregnant. Oh, was, wow. Was six months pregnant. There was a lot, a lot of life stuff going <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. If yeah. there was any sort of, um, advice or, or just encouragement that you would give to a lot of filmmakers that find themselves where you're at, where they want to tell a story, they want it to, to be personal, but that's frightening. You know, there's, there's, there's a trepidation in that. What advice would you give to them? I don't know because I don't really see what's frightening about talking about <laughs> yourself. Uh, that's an interesting perspective yeah. right there. Uh, because it, things kind of come naturally, which is, which is um, um, when you don't have, um, I was explaining this la last night at the screening at the Q&A, uh, when you don't have a lot of technical skills, because I, I, I didn't um, go to film school, because I, as I was saying, I, I, I had another, uh, did other studies. Yeah. Um, Not having gone to film school, where would you say you really learned how to make movies? Was it, it making movies? I didn't. I didn't learn how to make movies. <laughs> I, I, making making the, the short films was just sort of. Um, uh, so overwhelming. I'm not, right. I'm not quite sure I could really call it a learning process, but I'm sure uh, uh, dealing with the overwhelmingness of it is a, in itself, I guess, a form of teaching. Yes. Uh, but um, but to, to go back to what I was saying earlier, is, is that is that um, when you're you, you're you have uh, you're very um, unsure of your technical skills, it's it's good to have a story that you that you feel uh, um, uh, you, you feel every every moment of mm -hmm. it because I feel it comes naturally where to put the camera and all that because you mm -hmm. you know kind of whereas if it's something that's more exterior to you it's um, I feel it, it demands more skill so mm -hmm. um, is there anything that um, that you can think that directly translate it from when you were doing documentary filmmaking and then when you started doing the shorts and doing more fictional filmmaking between the documentary and the mm -hmm. fiction? Mm -hmm. 
Well, the thing is, that what's uh, entirely different is that in the docu in the case of the documentaries, I was filming, so that's a very uh, has nothing to do with um, and there, and and you don't you're not directing uh, directing uh, actors and uh, so um, I, I remember my my father saying that for him he went a lot from documentary to fiction and back and back and forth and that it was it was uh, uh, kind of a relief uh, to to go back to. To, to film in. To use the different, yeah. to go between the two different so mediums. So very, um, very different, I I except that uh, what still interests me in, in fiction is, is looking at actors. Uh, so I have to be interested in them right. as faces and as, as uh, uh, right. Um, you mentioned um, your father and, and his and the conversations that he had with you about what he likes to do, going between the two documentary mm -hmm. and fiction. Um, uh, where does your father factor in in your own film education um, and in learning, you know, to do what what almost is like a calling for you to do and make films? Right. That's difficult to answer that because uh, he he didn't when, when it, what I said uh, that he liked going back and forth. <laughs> Everything I know of my father uh, as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. I've learned reading his interviews. No kidding. So, uh, so you guys and, had and talking to his friends. So we he never talked about filmmaking. Uh, I, I hardly ever went on a set. Okay. Uh, so it was very, very uh, separate. Uh, how do you say? Uh, uh, yeah. He worlds. Um, kept his creative. Do you find yourself doing a similar thing? You know, do you find that your filmmaking is an self expression, yeah. something that you do, but then you're striking a balance with very your much so. personal yeah, yeah. life? Yeah. Um, how do you. How Except do you that continue? my boyfriend's my camera person. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be a, a, a bit interesting. Do you. When you guys leave set, do you kind of say, nope, we won't talk oh, no, about no, it, we, or do you can, does it overflow? <laughs> <laughs> so it's true that it's not. But, right. but that's with your, with your, but with your children. It's true, I can't really imagine. My daughter often asks me about movies. I, I, I don't want to, I mean, I, because what I hate in the movie world is that this uh, like thing where that's all, all um, I mean, I like talking only about movies, but, but as if it was like the only thing that existed, it's, it's very, um, uh, I don't know. Unpleasant. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so then, in, in that regard, I will um, end it on on a on a pretty interesting question. Then, on a, a question that does kind of take us a little bit away from like being able to talk mm -hmm. about something that's not film. If you had to name an influence that was not film, you know, a book, a painting, dance that really speaks to you as a filmmaker, but it's not a film or not a filmmaker, what would you? Is, is there anything that kind of comes to mind? Well, I'm, I'm profoundly influenced by by, uh, by literature, uh, but uh, as an influence, I'm because uh, it's, it's very difficult the question of, of mm -hmm. influence. Um, um, hmm. Question. <laughs> um, or just anything that maybe is on your same um, expression, something that you feel like shares a voice or you, you connect with on an expressive level. But yeah, I would say I would say the you know for the um, American novel to, to, uh, to Thomas Wolfe, not, oh, not yes. Tom Wolfe, huh? to Thomas Wolfe, uh, mm -hmm. Look Homeward, Angel, that that sort of li that lyrical aspect of of, of American um, uh, Writing, literature. Yes. Um, I, um, I'm, yeah, anything yeah, no, lyrical, that's, I I, 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 that, that makes, that's, that's, I can definitely see that in your okay. film, <laughs> and it, it comes through, and I want to, it's one of the reasons I wanted to ask you, kind of, about your influences. Justine, I want to thank you very much for oh, bringing this film to us at the Cleveland Film Festival, and sharing your time, and talking with us about your process. I appreciate your opening up to us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christine. Um, join us with um, Cleveland Film Talk as we return. I chose the media arts program at Tri-C because I fell in love with the camera. I've always wanted to be a filmmaker uh, and I just never thought it was possible. 
One of the things that makes the Media Arts and Studies program different from some other programs is we really marry a study of the art of story and story structure with hands-on real-world production experience. Just for an example, our students in their first year will get introduced to the equivalent of a one-ton grip truck worth of media equipment and at the same time they're breaking down scripts, they're breaking down treatments and they're learning about how the structure of the story is going to influence every other thing they do in post and all the way through distribution and marketing. I was surprised by the quality of the equipment that the school provides because it is professional equipment, stuff that you will see in the industry. I was definitely surprised and overwhelmed with all this uh, equipment that they have to offer. It's very exciting to be able to have that hands-on opportunity and to learn all the ins and outs of this stuff. The faculty who teach in the Media Arts and Studies program come from a range of disciplines. So we have working cinematographers, and we have editors, and we have motion graphic artists, and of course they're all educators as well. They are working in the field that we are all trying to get into, so they are very informative to tell you how things really are so you don't show up to a job and are completely shocked. The collaborative opportunities that are available to Media Arts and Studies students are limited only by their own pre-production, really. We have had students collaborate with dance, with theater, with um, recording arts and technology, and even automotive technology and uh, fire training academy. I've collaborated with some of the photo students. They can take stills and stuff, and they have cameras too. So there's a lot of opportunity to collaborate and learn more. Another exterior shot. The faculty is extremely supportive uh, with our creativity, with our projects. I've yet to be limited on what I can bring to the table as far as story. I'm able to be that artist. You know, I'm able to be the one in charge of that visual design that I want to get across, and I have a lot of fun doing that. You don't really have to go to New York or L.A. to live your dream. I mean, it's right in Cleveland. Doug Durth tells the story of a local football team in his film, Underdogs. Doug, the underdogs don't just, are not just on the field. The community is also dealing with manufacturing jobs, leaving, and I would like for you to share why you drew those parallels. Well, I grew up in the Akron Canton area, so lived here and um, went, to high, went to high school uh, down south. So, you know, I grew up in the football community, which is Ohio. There's no better... Uh, bigger fans for football than Ohio, and also um, a lot of people in my community um, in Canton, as well as people I knew in Akron, have suffered the manufacturing job loss in this part of the country as well. It was Hoover and Canton and a lot of the tire companies and, you know, so it was just, it was um, something that I had been affected by personally growing up. And also my executive producer who came up with, approached me with the original idea for this story, um, kind of had this idea of, of implementing these two storylines. So we just worked really hard in crafting something that talked about underdogs um, and letting football kind of be, represent that, represent the community, but also really focusing on points in our lives when we're all underdogs and we're just, you know, we just keep trying to do the right thing and, and hoping it's going to pay off. You also shot your film uh, here in Ohio. Why was that important to you? Well, I mean, I'm from here, so it was always, ever since I started making movies, I kind of dreamed of the day I could come back here and, and make a film in Ohio. I, I joke because uh, I say my, my parents finally got to see I really work for a living. Uh, they think I just hang out on the beach in California. <laughs> but also it was really exciting to work with um, the local crews, and also we found some really great talent. We found some two of our, our lead kid actors, you, you, I call them kids because they play high school football players, are right here from Cleveland. And uh, they did a wonderful job, fantastic job. So uh, just really proud. I'm proud of my state and, and proud of the folks here. And I was just really happy to share it with them. It's a pretty unique story that you're sharing. Uh, when you began or working with the project, did you guys, the executive producer brought it to you? Did you have a script that you started with? No, we didn't have a script at all. Um, I had done some 
kind of uh, corporate work with his company. He's an entrepreneur and a marketing person down in the Canton area. And so he came to me with this idea that he had. Um, part of the story is very true about the entrepreneur inventing a product and then uh, somebody trying to take it from him. So we thought that was really, really interesting. And he's another person who is very adamant about shooting it in Ohio. He's, he's been somebody who works really hard about keeping his own manufacturing jobs here, even if it costs a little more. So it was just, it was really a natural fit for us both to do that. Um, and so Ben had called me, his name is Ben Suarez, he called me and said, hey, I have this great idea. Um, you know, so we brought a, high, a writer on. This one was a bit of a miracle. I mean, we, from the minute we put pen to paper to write the script to the minute we delivered a finished film was just over a year. Wow, that's yeah. a short amount of time um, ultimately for films. Yeah. Why do you think, uh, it was the generation and the passion that drove you guys, but were there other things that you think kind of sunk to make it happen that quickly? Yeah, I think, well, most filmmakers will understand. The nice thing was we had the financing. Mm -hmm. um, that makes it a lot easier because you can start working. And the second thing is we wanted to use real high school locations. And so we had a ticking clock to get that done before the school year started. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just put everybody, as a director, you love that <laughs> because, you know, you don't have any excuses. You have to start by this date and right. everybody starts focusing on it. So I think that was the big part of it is we, we had the financing and we had a bit of a ticking clock of when we wanted to shoot it where we could use the locations uh, on independent films. Right. Of course, you, you beg and plead for everything. So we were just really trying to hit this window. Excellent. Yeah, we... Uh, I, you really kind of learned, talk about hitting the ground and running. You learn filmmaking by doing. Can you talk a little bit about that process for you? Yeah, I moved out to California about 20 years ago, <laughs> back when I was two. Just kidding. But, Just um, yesterday. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I hadn't planned on a, f a career in filmmaking at all. In fact, I was a personal trainer, and I, I went out there and I started working with some entertainers, actors, musicians. Um, and I created a friendship working on the set with John Cusack, who's a very famous actor. And a couple years into our relationship on that level, he started a production company and said, why don't you come work for me there? So I started working as his assistant, mm -hmm. um, learning the business that way because I hadn't studied it in school. And over the years, got very interested after reading a lot of scripts, um, went to acting school, started acting, and then eventually evolved into producing. So it was kind of... Uh, uh, a bit of 15 years of on-the-job training, you know. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think that filmmaking is that process. Yes. You, know, you, you have to learn it by doing it, putting your hands on it. Yeah. What um, is one of the more ex unexpected lessons that you think you learned by just kind of being out there and making movies? Um, I think probably the most, well, a refreshing lesson is this. Everybody is looking for good material. And I, I, I tell filmmakers that because it seems like such a frustrating business to break into. People are like, well, you gotta have contacts, you have to have all this. But the truth is people are looking for the next great film and the next great TV series or web series. Um, and so I think that should be inspiring to filmmakers because um, there's room, you know, there's, it's, it's not, it's very competitive, but you know, if you have good material and you have something really interesting to present, people are really, Looking we'll for respond that. To it. So there is, there's this, there, there is this need. Now you have to know your stuff. People say, "Well, you got so lucky," and it's like, "Well, even if you get an opportunity, you have to be good at what you do to be able to, right. to, to take advantage of it." So yeah. I always encourage people go to film school and really learn your craft. There is room for very talented and um, efficient and great artists, Excellent. but you got to get that first, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and even as you talk about the material and the strength of the material, some would say that underdogs goes against the grain. You know, today a lot of films that have um, characters that are this age, you know, we're looking at vampire films, we're looking at, you know, um, post-apocalyptic stories, you know, dystopia. Yours is so story-driven. Um, were you conscious of that from day one with it? Yeah, and I, I thought it would be refreshing. I grew up watching, in the late 80s, watching kind of these, in fact, D.B. Sweeney, who's a star in our film, is probably best known for a film he did called Cutting Edge, which right. was just this fun oh, yes. hockey. And everyone loves <laughs> I it. I know, you know it well. <laughs> and we don't see a lot of those films anymore, so um, that's sort of the tone and the style we wanted to do this in. We wanted to kind of pay homage to the really good, sort of inspiring family films, but then give the film a style that's current today, the look of the film, the music. We have the Black Keys, we have Blues Travelers, we have all this great music in the film. So we try to make it contemporary, 
but kind of pay homage to just some really good right. sports movies, you know. Yeah, speaking of uh, paying homage and, and thinking about your past and um, your filmmaking past, what would you say was your favorite film when you were 12 years old? Can, can you remember at all? When I was 12 yeah. years old. <laughs> um, Well, I'd like to come up with a really smart film to make me look smart, but the truth is, I, I remember my dad taking me to see Escape from Witch Mountain. Excellent! And, yes, um, I, I like know those that movies. movie. Oh, yeah, it's a fantastic it was really fun, film. You know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think when I was that young, those are the kind of movies I really liked. Wonderful. That's why I asked for twelve because I don't want it yes. to be a smart. I want it to be. Yeah. This is your gut reaction. This is your experience that you yeah. had a film that you love. Uh, on that same note, I'm going to ask you, kind of fast forwarding today. Um, What's in your Netflix queue right now? Um, well, I'm a, I'm a bit of a documentary buff. In fact, most of the stuff I've done before the feature films have been documentaries. And um, I've got, I'm getting ready to actually teach a little class for four weeks on documentaries in LA. So I've got Wonderful. Thin Blue Line, which is a really great yes. documentary. And then I also have an interesting one called Jesus Camp. So both of yes. those I've ordered because I'm watching them to prepare for the class. Wonderful. Um, and then, T-vote on my TV so I can watch it about 12 times is kick-ass because I love that. Oh, movie. yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I really love this process of um, learning and now moving into a teaching role. A lot of people say you don't know something until you can teach it. As you're getting ready for this new experience, what's something that's the most exciting thing about now teaching film? Well, when they approached and asked me to do it, I, I hadn't really considered it yet, although um, now that I'm in my 40s, I kind of feel like part of my job is to also mentor the new up and coming. I'm a director and a filmmaker. I'm always looking for young talent, you know. So I think that uh, getting out and, and meeting folks and helping, I had a lot of help in this business. I had a lot of mentors. So I kind of felt like it's just a good thing for me to do. But I also think in studying, in, in preparing, I didn't know I'd do lesson plans, and but in preparing for that, it's it's sharpen my own skills again because I go back in and, and look at some of the techniques and structure which is all very important and it's good to be reminded of that so it's kind of a it, for me it's a win-win it's gonna be really fun and and I'm um, looking forward to it wonderful yeah. wonderful um, how do you feel um, your students you know if they see underdogs or they ask you to see it are you open to kind of sharing that work with them or do you kind of feel like you want them to do their own thing without seeing your work yeah I, I purposely haven't picked one of my own documentaries right. to share in the class um, because I would just like to talk about some other ones but yeah I'm, I'm totally open to sharing the work and again with filmmakers because there's so many challenges along the way right. And I think it's important for people to go in and, and just realize, if you go into it knowing that, the whole thing with the film is just trying to, to get through today and get the camera rolling the next day, you know? And there's gonna be a million things that you have to change. The script changes nightly. Yeah. But if you can go into it just knowing all that, you just make that part of the adventure, you know? And the, would that be kind of the advice that you would give to students is just every day it's gonna change, don't give up. Don't give up and, and do your best when you can to work on something you're really passionate about because then you don't mind. You know, if, if you're doing uh, something that you're passionate about or when you're first starting, you know, it's always great to pick a subject matter that you're either very passionate about or very familiar with. Um, and then it, it kind of drives you to get through. There's, there's more tough days than there are great days, but, you know, the overall right. journey is exciting at least. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for bringing your film here to Cleveland. Thank you for bringing it not just to the festival, but bringing the production here yeah. and telling our stories, the stories that are here um, that end up being universal. We really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us, um, and we will see you on the next Cleveland Film Talk.